Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and not be the last person between you and wine. So. <laughs> um, this work that we've been doing, um, thank you for the funding through Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We should also recognize that we did get a VA supplement um, in addition, so we did have some, a little bit of extra money to extend the work out also. Um, Kieran and I are the, the co-PIs on that, and that's only because you can only have two, not three here. Um, this is the forward. Um, this really is a team effort, and Ann Bartell, who's a labor economist at the Columbia University School of Business, is actually, it's the three of us doing this work. We're doing it together. I actually see Kieran, who's in Palo Alto, and I'm in New York City at Columbia more often than I see Anne, who's at the Morningside campus, and I'm at the medical center. But we talk on the phone frequently. You know, it's just that's the way life goes, um, and it works. And I also wanted to point out the doctoral student that we've just been calling the doctoral student all day has a name. Her name is Pam D. De Cordova, and um, so she has been working. The rest of our team um, are uh, programmers and have been helping, and we've been having a lot of help both on the Columbia side and the VA side with the programming, and it, it's been terrific. Um, it, it's important also to note that our team, and Karen and I, have been working, we've been doing some very similar work first in acute care hospitals in the VA setting. This was a pre-inquiry um, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation study that we're doing, and yes, the papers are coming. <laughs> they are being submitted soon. Um, we've been working on this for quite a while. Um, and we have been looking and, and using this longitudinal database um, from a, the, VA, the full VA sample. We've, we're looking at long-term care here, and we're going to be presenting this long-term care work, but we've also done this in the acute care. Um, and we're looking at human capital. Uh, I like to say that I taught Anne about hospital care and Jaco. She didn't know anything about that. And she taught me the theory of human capital and um, relational capital and general capital. And, um, but we've been looking at these different variables of human capital as well as staffing level. So it's just it's going beyond just what the level of the nurse is um, and how many nurses there are to looking at the characteristics. We're not getting into the process indicators because we're using large data sets, but clearly there's processes that happen when we have certain things that, in place. Um, the, you know, the D, using the VA data, um, Kieran's going to be talking about uh, the data sets and the actual variables that we've conducted, uh, uh, have com uh, developed. But we really needed to have a very large uh, setting um, and that codes the data to the most, you know, as well as anybody does across the country in the, using the same uh, algorithms. Um, and it really reduces the variation due to the organi organizational differences by having this common data set um, in these different settings. So um, with that, I'm going to give it over to Kieran to talk about our variables on nurse staffing. Well, the, um, I mean, for those of you familiar, one of the advantages of the VA is that we do have an integrated patient record and everything gets sucked out, sucked out of it into these data sets. So we have some really good data, and it's not just the medical record, there's the the DSS system, which is there, for those of you in the private sector, this is the Eclipsis management accounting system. And um, from that, we're able to pull out the data on the staffing at each unit with some degree of detail. We have the number of hours of each type of labor, and it's hours work, the so vacation and sick time and holiday time is pulled out of it. But it's, I, will, I do want to make clear that the hours that we have here are not productive on the patient. If, you were, if the, a nurse comes into work and is sent off to a training, that's hours worked and that's included in this. So there's a little bit of noise in here, but we've pulled out a lot of the noise compared to other systems where they're just looking at, the, you know, how many hours did you pay a nurse as opposed to the bedside. So we have 
For looking at big secondary data, I think we have quite good data. And the hours are adjusted um, for, con we do, they do track contract hours, uh, contract nurse hours that are working in each unit as well. So we've got pretty good data on that. And then what was a, a huge effort in our previous project that we had just ready to go for this project was it took us 18 months to get payroll data out of the VA, but we got the payroll data. And what's important about that in terms of this project is that the way the VA payroll data is organized, each nurse is the manager of the people that work for her, and there's a separate code. So we can track not only when did they start working for the VA and what their education is and how old they are and how long they've been a nurse and their years experience as a nurse, things like that. We can actually detect when they started working on the specific unit so that you have um, not just we have how long they've been working as part of that particular care team, if you will. And uh, that allows us to construct variables around the um, how long you've been working in the unit or structures of the teams and turnover. Um, and then the VA has lots of different patient data systems. We have uh, the VA creates a discharge abstract for with patient diagnoses for each type of unit you stay on. And um, they have their version of the Medicare minimum data set. And um, they also track patient movement across, you know, hour, minute, day for when each patient showed up on each unit when they got moved to other units. And one of the advantages of this, with this integrated data system is when a patient is admitted to long-term care, we have the discharge abstract for that long-term care so we can actually look at why they were readmitted from long-term care to acute care. <coughs> and if they're shifted to a different setting, and we can move, track those settings all around. Um, I will note in terms of the minimum data set is that uh, we finally, it was very recently, like two weeks ago, that we actually got the clean data set. So a lot of uh, the minimum, despite the fact that the head of long-term care promised us the data right after we started it. So the findings we have with those things are still very, very preliminary. The other thing that was part of this project was in addition to doing the secondary data analysis, we actually went around and talked to some hospitals. And it was actually very informative in terms of it, even at one facility, we went and talked, and there was one unit which was well run and functional, and the staff had all been there a long time. And same facility, there was another unit that they just had all kinds of problems with, and the nurses would come in and they would leave, and there was all this turnover. And so that there's, even within a facility, and Across the VA, we have that. But one of the things that really struck out in general in terms of the site visits we did is that, especially for the LPNs and the aides, they really felt that the VA was a great employer. And the thing that they, you know, sal sal wages were competitive, maybe a little bit higher they, in terms of compared to other long term care settings. They said it's a stable employer. The company's not being sold every six months or every year. You know, I know. It's, and the thing that they really touted was the benefits. And the benefits that in, for the non-RN employees in long-term care, the benefits, that the, the VA's benefit package is much better than this norm out there. And there were lots of people who said, I was just waiting to get into the VA because for this is what I want to do, and it's a much better employer. And um, this is reflected in our turnover data. Um, the data we ended up with usable data on was 223 units. Um, and in terms of monthly observations, we had almost 13,000 monthly observations over eight year, over seven years. And um, over this reflects over 300,000 patient stays. This is a mixture of types of long-term care units. And we've controlled for this, but we're going to have, we, we want to refine this. <coughs> in that there were units that were predominantly Skilled nursing, short stay units, lengths of stay of less than 90 days. Um, there were then units that were long stay units, and then units that had a mixture of units. And for these initial analysis, we've excluded the units that were identified as separate hospice units, and also those units that were specifically identified as um, geriopsych units. Um, 
And this, is, this type of unit is actually to, um, because the staffing was different in some of these different types of units. Compared to the private sector, our units may be a little bit smaller than can be the norm. I mean, the average unit had a census of thir thir about 35 and a half patients, and the interquartile range was 26 to 44. I know that in the private sector, some of the long-term care facilities have one, two, 300 patients. Um, some of them, not all of them, but, but a lot of them tend to be a lot bigger than this. So that's another way that we're different and we, as we start to uh, disseminate our findings, we're going to have to be very cognizant of these differences um, because the VA is somewhat different. Um, the nurse staffing had a mean of 8 4.8 hours a day. day. Um, and I will note, because as we actually looked through, there was a lot of variance in this, and there was a, a lot of the units, especially the units that were tended to focus on the short stay units, had higher hours of care. And there were a lot of units that had, um, you know, seven, eight hours of care per patient day, which is pretty high for, you know, long term, might not be, because a lot of the long term care has some rehab folded into it, so it could be consistent. Um, the uh, skill mix is a little different than is the norm in that um, I didn't put the RN percentage here, but it's about a third of the, the staff is RNs, 40% are aides, and 20% LPNs. And as I noted, there's lots of variance across units in terms of the units tended to have what is their normal staffing. Or, okay, my normal staffing is two hours a day, and they tended to fluctuate around that, or it was four hours a day when it fluctuated around that, or eight hours a day when it fluctuated around that. But um, and that mean is fixed up, as I'll get to, in terms of our fixed effects. So we put it and we look at the variance around those units. Um, the other, just to provide some more details on the staffing, you can see that um, I mentioned the, uh, in terms of the tenure, the average nurse had been working over four years on the unit um, for all types of nurses. and. Um, with a fair bit of variation, I put the 25th and 25th percentiles. And then just to put it out there, I put the maximum. And you can see that you know, at the, at the tail of the distribution, they have units where they're, um, the nurses have been there for more than t all, 10 years. And one, in one of the units that we went on a site, I went on a site visit to, um, and I asked, and they said, well, you know, we have a very senior staff. And until two people, two people retired two years ago, and until then, we hadn't had a new employee in 13 years or something like this, because we've all been here at least that long. So we've got these two new employees, but everybody else has been here, and so-and-so has been here 20 years, and you know, so it's just this very stable. Now, not all units were like that, but if you actually, um, and it, this reinforces here, you look at the turnover, if you look at the means, on, on average, about 2% of the employees were new in any given month for the different types of nurses. But there's a lot of standard deviation. And if you look out here, that even at the 75th percentile, we've got a lot of units that have no, on average, they're averaging no turnover a month. So it was very skewed. We had lots of units with very stable staffing, and then a small number, like that one I referred to earlier, that had problems that had a lot of turnover. Uh, and we're very cognizant of this and what's going on. So 